Good morning. We're still drying corn, but hey, we're down to one light on the weapon. That's good. It was still orange light went off at 3.30 when I was here this morning. So I was a little concerned that we were going to have a bunch. But Dad's over here with the hood up on the tractor. We're going to see what's going on. coolant warning on the tractor it's getting cold everything shrinks you gotta uh, top it off a little bit so he's getting that around uh, I'm gonna check on our dryer see how we're doing we just got one green light on which is good that means that uh, we dried through a lot of corn overnight I'm happy about that ah the smell of corn cooking in the morning all right um, so the plan here this morning was to do the corn plot right we talked about that yesterday um, when I had texted my agronomist yesterday he had said bright and early <laughs> and when I texted him last night said what time does bright and early mean he said 8 8 30 so I was anticipating doing that first thing here this morning he uh, sent me another message this morning or er, real early like five something saying that um, he had some stuff come up this morning it's gonna be closer to noon 11 or noon before he gets here. So, we had moved the combine and the cart back to the plot field. But uh, we're going to go back and finish the field up that we were in yesterday. Keep working on that. So I'm taking the green cart down. i uh, going to park it in the uh, ends down there. And we're just going to use the combine to make rounds because it's shorter rows. We don't have rock today. Dad's chiseling. Um, dryer's going to need some wet corn. So we're going to keep it moving. If we can keep that dryer moving and never have to shut it off, it's a lot more efficient. So try and do that oh it is going to be a beautiful day <clears throat> fairly warm for november something in the 50s i think sunny might be a double crop bean day it might be we'll go check them after the plot <laughs> anna came for a ride she is home she's got a uh a plot with uh, somebody local here that she is going to go to today so she has some stuff going on tomorrow on Saturday and had um, asked her uh, people that she's working with out there in Iowa if it would be possible for her to come home a day early and then um, reach out to some of the people here in Northwest Ohio so I don't know who or what but she's got an agronomist from the area that's got a plot harvest today and she's gonna go do that with them so uh, she stopped in for a quick ride talked to her she'll be back this afternoon she might make it to the tail end of our plot here I told her if pioneer wants to buy lunch for the golden harvest plot we'd let her <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen but uh, yeah good to see her so maybe we'll get her on video later anyway we're getting this uh, little bit here done there's not a lot of acres left here Phil's got a full truck, so he's going to get back, and I'll check and see if the dryer's still running, but it should be, and um, you know, we might get that across the road done as well before the plot. It's nine, not even 9.30 yet, so we should have time before Wade gets here to do the plots. Um, what was I going to tell you guys? Oh, this combine has given me computer trouble again this morning. I've had to restart three times, three times already. The first time the monitor froze... The second time it did the same thing when we were it did when we were running beans that one day where it was like it was shutting on and off the separator real fast. Restart fixed that and then it froze again and I had to shut it off and restart it. Now I am starting to find some connections in some of this stuff. I turned off my iPad with my Connect Mobile that's showing me my mapping and it hasn't froze since. Now that's not enough to say that that's causing it. However, yesterday I did that live stream and I did it on my iPad. And once I got done with my iPad, I flipped it back around and I put my Connect Mobile back on there and within a minute it froze. The combine had been running fine and within a minute of that it tied it up and just wouldn't do anything, so we had to restart. That made me think, huh, it must be the Connect Mobile. So, we'll test this again when I'm not trying to actually get something done and see if I turn that back on and it makes this computer freeze up, then I at least know what's causing it and can just stop using the iPad and hopefully that will solve it for now. There is also a software update that I have. It's downloaded. Again, I just need time to do it. And so uh, maybe once we get done here and we're waiting for the plot to start, 
I can do that software update. The problem is they take 20 minutes or something like that, and I don't want to. I want to shut the combine off for 20 minutes and wait on it. Well, we don't have too much left here. We're about done. Uh, however, I just got a text from my agronomist. He's going to be here in about an hour, so we're not going to have time to do the field across the road before the plot. Uh, we can do it after the plot if that's what we want to do. But uh, we'll get this one done, and then we'll go over there and start getting stuff ready. We got to pull all the signposts out. We got to make sure I got my uh, bags. I got some plastic bags. We use these for pulling the samples to. Uh, pull, you know, sample the, the grain and then um, take it to the test shot later and test it, whatever. Um, yeah, this is really good corn in here, although we're getting by some trees, it's going to drop off. The geese are flying today. Lots of them. It's not a row of shame. It's not. And I can prove it. Because we're along the side. There was one corn planter pass there, that's 24 rows, and then we plant it over. And that's that's a bonus row. You know how you know it's a bonus row? Because now there's two of them. It got to be more, and there's more down there. They're point rows, not rows of shame. Done with this one. That 46 acres averaged 211, and that is darn good corn. Also, our monitor didn't freeze anymore since I stopped using that. Again, not a correlation yet, but if I turn it back on and it starts to freeze, then we know something. So, uh, what time is it? 1021. Plot's going to be here and we'll probably be a half hour before we get started on it, but like I said, we got some stuff to go get ready, so I'm going to get the combine empty here and then we'll drive back up towards the farm and get everything around. Good opportunity to do those software updates here, so let me get them started. Dad's back. He finished another farm and was going to keep going today, but he's having electrical issues. Imagine that. Electrical issues on a piece of green equipment. Ha! Huh, how about that? His seems to be more voltage regulator issues or alternator, which is strange because we put a new alternator on that tractor last year. Hmm. So, sounds like it might still be under warranty. The dealer's going to come out and look at it this afternoon, so he just decided to leave the tractor here and work on something else in the meantime. I think he's going to go disc, actually. Just start discing corn stalks. Okay, it's time to get the corn plot harvested. So, first thing we got to do is go and pull all these signposts out. I'm just going to pull them and lay them out in front. Uh, Wade is up here, and we're going to make sure that he uh, has everything written down in the right order before we totally destroy the order of our signs, and then we have to go look for stakes, and it makes it a lot more difficult. It is important to remember that we have six row entries and not eight. When we're harvesting got to remember that six rows not eight so uh and we have one two three four five six rows of buffer here that's not part of the plot we'll have to harvest that off separate and then we can get started with our entries all right the signs are all pulled and laying in the grass so we'll be able to tell what each one is when we are harvesting it wade's gonna grab a length measurement while we go down and get the combine fired up entry number one it's a hundred day corn. It's a new one, right? It's a new one? This is the second year. Second year on it. Okay. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We've got a great setup. I've got scale data right there. We're gonna pull samples, throw them in the bag down there. Oh, we just we just drive. We don't even have to do anything. Don't have to unload a way wagon every time. It's easy. We'll see how they do. Work our way across here. I think we have like 15 or 16 hybrids. Yep. All right, we are moving on. This one here is an important one. It is a 103 day, uh, 03 B19. It's a new one for next year. Uh, anything with a B in it is 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 new for next year. That's our brilliant marketing team coming up with the B series, which is almost as good as the A series. Right, Wade? I like marketing. It keeps me very in tune to what year they were launched. I like it. Yeah, it's basically what year it was launched, but it's okay. No, it's all good. Um, so we're kind of keeping an eye on you know this one seeing how it's going to do compared to the o3r40 that was next to it that i know really well the o2k that was next to that oh six a next yeah the o6 yeah so we've got another one up here uh that's 106 days so stalks seem pretty good there's a lot of leaves laying on the ground but the tops are still hanging on everything looks good from a, a plant health standability side of it uh we'll see where the the yield place and comes into comes out at so 
preliminary yield monitor data shows that it was slightly better than the 03R40 next to it that we know. So this is agronomist Wade. He's been on before, but it's been a while. Um, Wade works for my seed company that I can't talk about. Have I told you about this? Is it Golden Harvest right here? Yeah, you're allowed to say it. I'm Golden not. Harvest? Is that the Golden Harvest in your shirt, too? <laughs> I, I, didn't, about that? I didn't say it. Have I told you about this? I don't think Have so. you heard about Oh, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know, guys. So this last hybrid that we did, 106 day, this is a sample of it, and you can see that it's got a lot of red on those kernels. That is called Kernel Red Streak. Genetic, I think. Okay, we are making our way through the plot here. We're up to the, the where the real plot starts, right? This one over there was 109 day. We're in 110 day. This is the 10B61. No, this is 10D. No, this is 10D, 10D21? Yes. yes. Uh, 10D. Uh, so we have 310 days. Okay, so the next one is the 10B61. That is the one that we had in my high management plot back there that wasn't as good as the 10L, which is the one on the other side of it. But that was planted early and didn't have as good a stand. This was planted late and has a perfect stand. So I'm really interested to see how these 310 days turn out. The 10D21 that we're in now is the one that you gotta plant it super thick. It's a very determinate ear. And we probably didn't plant the plot thick enough for it to win here. It's really good corn, um, but it, it's, it's kind of limited in where it fits, I guess you'll say. Uh, I've used it in my irrigated stuff. It's done really well up there. We pushed this to 42,000 plants per acre last year. I think that was a little high, uh, but at 38, 40,000 with water and good, good growing conditions, this is phenomenal corn. So, But this is a really interesting spot in the plot where we have these 310 days that are all just a little bit different, and we'll see how they uh, compare to each other. So now we're over one pass. This is the 10B61, the new one for next year. And the pass next to us is the 10L16 that we've had. That corn has been really, really good for us this year. Like that's one that we've been in the last two fields that I've been super impressed with. It's the one that did super awesome in my high management trial back there. But look at the plant health difference. Look how those tops are starting to break out. It's just it's curling up, the leaves are shorter. I don't know if you can see it real well from here. I'll show you this when we're in that strip. But this one is very upright. It's uh, The tops are still in it for the most part or not bending over across the rows you can see down there a long ways much better plant health on the 10b than the 10l the question is does it yield better right because that's all we care about we've known that the 10l 16 has had poor plant health or disease tolerance and poor roots since it came out and we still plant a lot of it because it wins it's it's just been phenomenal corn and how many years have we had this one now Ever since I've been in? here. So okay, so we've five. had it for a while. So yeah. it's still really good corn. And, uh, you know, hopefully this 10B offers that kind of yield punch, a little better plant health, standability, and we can transition away from it a little bit. But we'll see. Now here's this strip of the 10L16, and you can just see that the, the stalks are just deteriorating. It's still standing really well. Like, this is not a problem. And actually, it's probably better here than it has been in a lot of places, likely due to the fact that it was planted later. Um, but it just doesn't have the same look to it. And then you look at the 11V76 next to it, right? Yep. That, that, that plant is just perfect. night and day different. Perfect, yeah, perfect. That looks fantastic. This, this one, that one, and the one on the other side of it are what I would consider our three best hybrids right now. At least what I have had in the three best. Now we'll see what this 10B does, and we'll see what some of the 113 days do, although that's getting pretty full season for me. But 10L, 11V, 12S, you won't find a better package of three hybrids in 110, 11, and 12 day than that. I, I don't think anywhere in the industry. Unfortunately, you guys don't know what company sells that lineup, so I don't know. If you want to buy it from me, you can buy it from me. <laughs> Our green cart is full, so I'm gonna empty it before we finish this up. We've got the 112 day in the combine now. We gotta unload, and then uh, I think there is 213 days and then my agronomic trials so we're getting towards the end of it here there goes dad he's been out disking back here i don't know if he's quitting for lunch probably all right we got our cart unloaded and unloaded that last one now we're into the 113 day and look how bright this one is and it stood out all year it's been a tall hybrid it's just really 
different looking plant compared to some of the other stuff I've had it next to. Uh, it stands out a lot. It's got great standability. It looks fantastic. As Wade said, it's a what? A thumper. It's a thumper because the ears are so big they go thumping through the combine as it's as you're harvesting it. It's 113 day. We're pushing it for me. But this one dries down good. It dries down good. <laughs> if it yields, I'm not opposed to it. Now dad would throw a fit if I told him we were going to plant a bunch of 113 day corn. But we'll see. I do have a little bit of this out in the field um, in a couple spots. I think I planted like 16 bags of it or something. So uh, we'll see how it does here. We'll see how it does there. Last one of the uh, variety trials. The next stuff is all the same hybrid, but we have starter trial and population trial. I believe population is first. We would hit a uh, 28, 34, and 40,000 entries, I believe. I got, it. I got the sheet, we'll look it up. Okay, we're down to the last four strips. We've got the uh, population stuff done. And I don't have any numbers on any of this stuff. We've got to test all of these samples before we get any numbers to know how anything really did. I mean, we can compare weights, but that's all we're doing until we have a moisture sample to go with that weight. Um, but we've got agronomy trials here now. So we have a strip with um, the two by two by two starter fertilizer. And then we have a strip with both two by two by two and in furrow and then in furrow only and then no starter fertilizer so that's what we've got in the next four they all look pretty much the same just from here i don't know maybe the second one over stands out just a little bit but uh sometimes starter can make a big difference especially in moisture this is one where the moisture content it may make a bigger difference than the weight differences all right, the plot is done. Agronomist Wade is gonna go start running samples. I've got three rounds of corn left out here that was not part of the plot. So we're gonna run that off real fast and uh, then go check in on him with the samples. This won't take very long. All right, I'll give you that one. That one is not a bonus row. Well, it's two rows now at least. We'll call them Rosa Shane, it's fine. Something got off with the six to eight transition in the plot there, that's what happened. I'm pretty sure there's a deer about to run out the end of this uh, strip. This is kind of the last refuge in the whole section. Well, there's some corn from the neighbors on the other end of it, but it's the last of our corn in this area. Yep, there he goes. Oh, it's just a dope. gonna run back into this corn make me chase her out again nowhere to go Got nowhere to go just made it cards full uh, I turned on my connect mobile again just for that last round just to see if my computer would freeze up and it's not exactly the same but when I got to the end here and it was unloading it restarted shut down on its own interesting interesting anyway we're done here uh we've got that like nine acres over there uh across the road from the field we were in this morning that i would like to do yet but i'm gonna go help wade with those samples and then uh maybe grab something to eat and check the double crop beans if we can run double crop beans we're gonna run double crop beans but I, i'm not convinced that we can do that so we'll see all right there goes agronomist Wade. He uh, got all his testing done. I think we had stuff anywhere from 20% to 30% moisture, and that will totally skew the results. So he'll get it entered into the spreadsheet when he gets home tonight. Um, so we'll see those tomorrow. I'll have them for you. One of my friends and neighbors sent me a Snapchat of a blown tire on one of their gravity wagons on the side of the road. We have one, a spare mounted ready to go i called them said hey come get this so they're gonna come and get it so i got it all out and uh, made sure the air was good in it got it there on the forks up so they can back their truck under and just take it and go we are gonna go grab some food really quick meaning gas station chicken today and uh check on our double crop beans it's gotten cloudy so i don't know but if we can run them we're gonna do them all right let's see what we got today i really wish it was still sunny I would be much more convinced that we could do these uh, than I am now if it's gonna be cloudy it's at least windy but um, 
it's not supposed to rain for a couple more days, so. Oh. Oh, those pots cracked much more than yesterday. Ooh. Mmm. I think it's time. Yeah. Let's do it. Time to combine double crops. Let's go. All right. We got the corn head off. Phil's gonna bring the grain cart. Dad's gonna help us move. He's bringing the head. We're heading to the double crop field. It's uh, 2.30, so we gotta move because we got 85 acres to do and we're gonna get them done tonight. I'm not taking two days to do this. Holy crap, the bean head is huge. Okay, we gotta get some endros opened up here and uh, some room for everything. Phil's bringing the grain cart. Dad brought the head down for me. Uh, he should be able to haul, keep up hauling with one truck, hopefully. But we'll find out, I guess. And uh, see if we can't knock these all out. No, we're gonna knock them all out tonight. There's no see if we can't, we are going to do it. Hopefully they yield halfway's decent, but that remains to be seen. And if they're under, if they're under say 18% moisture, I'm happy. I, they might even get below 15%, but they're not right now. 20. Endros, they're, they're endros, we'll see. All right, I got the endros around the front done. You can see we've got two different varieties out here. There's a little bit of a color difference. We're gonna go ahead and just split the field right here. We'll get the ends in the back done and we'll work this side off and then the other side. I think, well, this one's a 2.8, that one's a 2.9. They shouldn't really be much difference between them. We'll see what kind of yield we get here. The, 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 let's, let's see. We need 20 bushel an acre to make it worth it, okay? The goal was 30 bushels to the acre. I'm hoping for 40 bushels to the acre and the pipe dream is 50. 50 is not going to happen. But 40 is possible. Although, given what we're seeing right here, now I don't trust the combine at all. But it's showing me mid 30s. I'll take that. That's a win all day. So, um, they're small beans. We got a lot of pods. We got to figure out how to get these pods cleaned up, which means tighten the concave, speed up the rotor, do what we got to do to uh, get them threshed out just because they're so flat they're not cracking open um going through the, the combine there because they're there's yeah we gotta get the gaps right and clean up our losses a little bit but it's double crop beans we don't care that much we're just gonna go and get them oh look we made it into the 40s 44 oh this is gonna be fun they look really good for double crop beans they look fantastic they're a little wetter than i had hoped 18 we'll see maybe they'll dry a little bit yet but uh, they're not going to get down to below 15. All right. Well, these are going to be really tough to get them clean, which I want to do as best job I can, but they're all going to town, so as long as they don't complain, which they might, um, it's not a huge issue. They're not dry. I'm a little thinking maybe, eh, maybe I shouldn't have come down here, but we're here now. We're going to get them out as long as we got somewhere we, that's going to take them and everything but it is what it is. So there's gonna be some beans here. Uh, the part of the problem is, you know, this is wheat stubble, right? So these beans double crop. So for those of you that aren't familiar with that term, basically this was a wheat field. We had wheat growing here last, planted last fall, harvested it in July. That was the crop that we planted here this year. Uh, the wheat came out early enough and we had enough moisture and the price of beans was good enough that we decided to plant soybeans after we combined the wheat. It was July 9th, the day that I planted these. And uh, they came up and they grew and they've got beans on them. And so now we're harvesting them. They're double crop because they're the second crop that we've uh, raised on this farm this year. And uh, that is not something that we do frequently or at least effectively up here. I mean, technically this field's in Ohio, but we're two miles into Ohio. We're right on the Ohio Michigan border and we're pretty far north. So it's not standard practice up here. And um, you know, it's hit and miss. So if we can get 30 bushel double crops, that is a huge win, huge win. If uh, if they're over 20 or really if they're over 10 or 15, they pay for themselves because our costs are very low. That's the name of the game with double crop beans is keep your costs as low as possible. And uh, we have done that pretty effectively. So um, if, we get, if we get over 10 or 12 bushel, it pays for the expenses. And that's just a matter of making it worth the time and 
getting some return on it. And right now it looks like they're going to be in the low 30s anyway, so we'll take that. But as I was saying, because we have this in wheat stubble, there's a lot of leftover wheat trash in there, or wheat stubble, or the, you know, the wheat that was below what we cut off. And so we're running all of that material through the combine now, and it gives, the, it, gives it a lot of, of stuff to sort through. Makes it a little bit harder to get a good, clean sample. And we have pods. We have a lot of pods. Plus the beans being small, being a little bit wet, makes the pods a little tough. It's hard to get them to crack open and get those beans out and get the pods to fly through the back of the combine. So we've got our concave closed way down. I've got the rotor speed up pretty high. Uh, I got the, the sieve closed down pretty tight so that we're running stuff through the rethresher if it needs it. Just trying to, to get them uh, threshed out good. Well, they look like beans coming out the auger. Two rounds. I could make two rounds, but just barely. Like, they're, they're not actually that bad of beans. They're very potty. They don't like the pods. The combine advisor is working on it. It's making changes, and it knows that they're too potty, so hopefully it cleans them up. But uh, I kind of have done what I think I should do, and they're still pretty potty, so I don't know. I don't know what else to do. We'll let the combine worry about it. Combine and beans is so much quieter in here than corn. I mean, you're just so much less violent with the corn head or with the bean head than the corn head is, you know, with ripping the stalks down and everything, and that all makes noise. But yeah, night and day difference. Huge head compared to the corn head. Just this is different. It's, it's fun. I enjoy it. But I do like shelling corn. It'll be good to get these beans out of the way, though. We'll be done with the bean head after that. We can get it cleaned up, put it in a barn, and be done with it. <laughs> oh yeah, we're making all kinds of adjustments trying to get rid of the pods. I knew that was coming. Look, I've even got a green card driver here for a little bit until we get a truck full. Probably one more or this last pass. Uh, we're getting better. I got more beans in the window than pods. Still not good. Part of my issue is that I changed the concaves. Like, we've got this combine set up for corn, right? And for not grinding up wet corn. And so I took that aggressive concave out of the third position. I really should put that one and one in the second, in the more aggressive concaves. That would help clean the pods up more. It's not worth it for the 80 acres of double crops. If we were doing a significant amount of them, we'd leave them till the end, and then we'd change the concaves, and we would do that. But that's not what we've got, and it's just not. I'm not messing with it. So, um... It is what it is. They'll be fine. I'm getting them cleaned up enough. You know, and if we throw some of those pods with beans in them right through the combine and they make 35 instead of the 38 that they're averaging now, well, that's okay. They don't look bad in the cart. They don't look good in the grain tank. Ugh. There's only so much I can do. Anyway. These are good beans. We're almost up to a 40 bushel average. That's fantastic. All right, we have a somewhat interesting turn of events here. So I am right on that variety split. This pass is actually a little bit mixed. That pass was totally into the another variety. They're a 2.9. These were a 2.8. Those are a 2.9. Basically the same, but you would think, if anything, they're going to be a touch wetter, right? Well, that one there is a moisture map. And where you see the green, they're below 17. Where you see the yellowish color, it's between 17 and 19, and the red is 19 plus. They're way drier, way, way drier. So we'll see, we'll make another round over there and see how much that changes, but uh, that's a big variety difference right there. So that's good. I Yeah, I'm just surprised. I would have thought the two eights would be drier than the two nines. Also, I made a bit of a mistake. We should have fueled up before we came down here. It's flashing over there. Two bars. It's not going to be enough to finish, I don't think. Phil even came on the radio as I was pulling out onto the road with the combine. You got enough fuel? Uh, I think so. We had a quarter of a tank or so. Yeah, that's not going to do it. So I'm going to have to have Dad or somebody bring me a fuel trailer. Well, now they're 16, but they're definitely drier. I mean, it's a clear line on the map. More yellows and greens than oranges and reds, so that's good. Not a huge yield difference, although you would lead to believe in this hole here, 
that they got better. That's that's this dip right through here, this draw. Uh, that makes sense. I think these beans got frosted. I don't think they were quite as mature as this variety, which again leads you to understand the moisture distant difference. These just matured a little bit faster, so uh, that's good. I mean, I, for double crop beans, that's fantastic. We're running mostly in the 40s here. We're over 40 bushel average for the field. This is fantastic. Also, I got a hold of uh, Anna, my sister. She's home and back from her plot, and she's gonna bring me a fuel trailer. Well, heck, you get some dryer beans, and that's that's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better. That's an acceptable sample there. Oh, good news, good news. Phil just got back from that first load, and I asked him, I said, how bad were they? And they were 20, 20 point something percent moisture, which was a 54 cent dock. That's bad, that's not good. However, they did not dock us for FM for all the pods in them. They said they were 1% and that's a zero dock and we're all good, they didn't complain. And they're better now than they were there, so uh, yeah, awesome. He's loading up the second load, gonna take him in. We're gonna end up with somewhere between three and four loads here. There will definitely be a fourth load. I don't know how full it will be. Uh, and these ones being drier, there'll be less dock on them. Now the, the grain cart that he is putting in the truck right now is mixed from both varieties. So they should be under 20. They probably won't be in the 15% range like, like these are sometimes running. Um, yeah, that's a stark difference there. So anyway, Anna just pulled in. So when we get back to the other end, we're gonna throw some fuel in and then she's gonna ride for a while. Boss fuel trailers for when you forget to fill up before you leave the farm. Whoops. Thanks, boss. All right, we have made it to our variety split, at least according to my background map, it's right here. It sort of looks like the next pass is sort of blending and fading before the color changes a little bit right over there. Yeah, so we'll see if this changes again, but that, oop, that is amazing, the difference there, and I'm curious if it goes back to the, the wetter beans over there, but it is what it is. We're gonna get them combined and get them out of here. We are up to 57 acres out of roughly 85 in this field that we'll have, so uh, not quite 30 acres to go. It'll take an hour and a half, maybe two hours at the most. And uh, well, yeah, 40 bushel double crop beans. We're winning here. Well, the moisture went back up. Maybe not quite as much. There's a little bit of green in there yet. But uh, yeah, definitely a varietal uh, difference there. Now I do think, so I think what happened when we planted this, we started on the far side, we used up the two eight treated beans that I had, right? That'd be this part. And then I had these two nines treated. So then we put those in and then we finished up with more of the two eights untreated, which I believe is what we're in now. So I don't know that we'll see much of a difference from there. We might, but who knows? It does appear that there's a bit of a yield drag or difference, or not, I shouldn't say drag, just they're, they're different there. So maybe there's something to it. The 2.9 was the right choice, unfortunately. I didn't plant as many of those as I did the 2.8, but it is what it is. We're down to about 20 acres. We should get them done. Phil just got another load. He's gonna haul in. They're uh, open till seven. It is 6.37. He should make it, but he's better be getting going. And, uh, between the grain cart and the empty truck, we'll have plenty of room. We might even get them all on the grain cart. What's left? I'm not sure. So, I have a rider. Hi, Anna. What's up, everybody? How's it going? She's home for the weekend from Iowa. Yep. So, if you don't know or you're new, this is my sister, Anna. She just graduated from Michigan State back in the spring and has a job working for a seed company, which can be named... Pioneer. Pioneer. I'm allowed to say that name. Um, did I tell you about this? No, I don't. I, she doesn't know what I'm talking about either. It doesn't matter. We'll tell. We'll tell you. will tell you later. It's a. It's a running joke. But anyway, how's things in Iowa? Yeah, things are good. Uh, I'm living in Southeast Iowa, so working with the Pioneer folks there as well as sales reps and customers, and so it's been good. Uh, we're about probably all of the beans are out, I would say, and then like 50% of the corn. Um, in uh, it was really dry this growing season, so. Uh, most most people are pleasantly pleasantly surprised with how things are going, but you know some people have got hit really hard with the drought. Uh, 
but we're seeing yields from like, I don't know, 230 all the way up to over 300 bushels. It just depends on where you're at, where you're at and what kind of soil you're on in your fertility program. Depends on whether they threw the bag out the window of the truck as they were driving by at 55 miles an hour or they slowed down to, you know, 20 miles an hour when they threw the bag of seed out of the window. Sure. Have you heard this joke? No. Oh, this is what us real farmers out here in the east say. We actually have to try to raise a crop and, you know, put some effort into it. Out there in Iowa and Illinois, their ground is so good, they just throw, it. throw the bag out the window and they get 300 bushel corn. That's all it takes out there. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty... It's cool to see the, the, the differences between Iowa and Michigan. And uh, it's definitely real heavy corn soybeans out there. Really not a lot of wheat or alfalfa. Right. Um, I have to turn. Hold on. Pause. Unpause. Okay. So she got to come home a day early this week because she lined up a um, uh, uh, a day to spend with a agronomist. Is that what you call them? What do you yeah. call them? Agronomist from uh, Northwest Ohio here and got to go harvest a plot today. It went well? Yeah, I got connected with uh, with the field agronomist this summer. He did a, a, an agronomy webinar and so I reached out to him and I was like, hey, can I come ride along with you for a day? And so they happened to be pulling out a plot just south of Napoleon. So drove over there this morning and... Uh, so how much of the uh, the stuff that you saw today is the same as what you see in Iowa? Really minimal. There might be two or three numbers that are the same or that I recognize. So it's really a lot different. But the, I mean, the soil is a lot different than here in Iowa. It's actually way flatter here than it is in Iowa. It's a lot more rolling hills and there's not as many trees. It's a lot more wide open than you are here. So, you know, you need different roots for different areas. And so... Just like a professional. Yeah. So, I mean, not one hybrid so you need different hybrids for the eastern and western corn belt um, while there is some overlap not a whole lot uh, but no it was good we had like yields about 240 250 and so i think that was pretty good yeah the area where they were in uh has caught some more rain early in the growing season especially if you go east of here like by our Berkey ground and uh the county to the east of us kind of between here and there and then south they've had really really good crops all year so you know we had 80 bushel soybeans but we didn't have any corn down there. Had we had corn, it'd be those same type of yields, I'm sure. So, anyway, yeah. good to have you home for the weekend. Yes, yeah, nice to be home. Uh, I'm sure everybody wants to know when you're going to sell me some Pioneer seed, but oh, maybe maybe this spring we'll get some on we'll, the on the we'll farm. See, we'll see. All right, Anna's taking off. She's got stuff going on tonight, I think, or something. I don't know. Whatever. We are going to finish this up. Thanks to uh, to her for being a good sport and being on video. You got two guys today. You got two two non-normal participants with Wade and Anna. Aren't you guys lucky? Well, I wasn't expecting to learn anything in this field. I expected them to be double crop beans, to be halfway decent, and for us to move on. I'm learning stuff, though. I'm learning. You're always learning, right? Number one, varieties matter. In the fuller season beans, for some reason, were drier here than the earlier ones. That's interesting to me. You also can kind of see this center piece has yielded just a little bit better. We didn't have this yellow streak continue through there. Over here, we have much more yellow. Why? I can tell you what this red spot is. That's a wet spot, so we're going to ignore that for right now. But why did our yield drop off? This is the same variety on both sides with a different strip in the middle. So why aren't these beans as good as these beans were? Well, again, you remember what we did here. We planted our treated two eights our treated two nines, our untreated two eights. What that map tells me is that the seed treatment that we used paid even in July. Even on double crop beans planted July 9th, it was worth spending the extra money to plant treated seed over untreated. I never ever would have guessed that. I used the treated beans because I had them and I wanted to use them up and not have to return them. I, I'm shocked by that. It's good. It's good to know. I am glad that I planted them and I can see that. Uh, it gives me a lot more confidence in using the seed treatments on all of our beans no matter when we plant them. I have pretty well known that planting treated beans pays big time when we plant into early cool soils, potentially wet conditions, uh, or my ultra early beans that are going to sit in the ground for a long time. No question about it, you use the best seed treatment you can find. Once the temperature warms up though, 
and it was so hot I was sweating my butt off throwing bags in the planter that day. Uh, you generally don't think the seed treatments do that much. Clearly they do, because that is the only difference there. We didn't have any spray strips or check strips or anything like that out here, so that's good. Here is the last pass. We are done with the double crop beans for the year. Awesome. According to our yield monitor, which I do not trust in double crop beans, but according to it, they went just over 40 bushel. Now, I went back and watched, or I'm in the middle of watching, my YouTube video from July 10th. You guys can go back and watch this one. That was the day that we planted these soybeans. It was really July 9th, but the video posted the next day, right? And I was talking about the economics of double crop beans quite a bit. Now, the price that we used there was, I think, $12.68 or something like that. I will have to double check what the price is today, but it's slightly lower than that. We're still in $12 range, but I think it's a little less than $12.68 uh, cash price. So, um, but we're in that same ballpark. It still, still all applies. And uh, we had our seed cost. We had... The, the cost of running the planter, we have the cost of running the combine over the ground. The herbicide cost we were gonna do regardless, so that really isn't a variable cost that we have to worry about paying for with uh, uh, what just because of the double crop beans, because we were gonna use that whether we did double crop beans or not. Um, and so those are our costs, seed, planter, combine. Uh, I didn't get far enough in that video to tell you what I figured they were at the time, but I would estimate high right now at $125 an acre is what that cost us. Probably somewhere between $100 and $120. And, uh, and those are using custom rates and high numbers. So if you figure that, $120 an acre or $125 an acre, and if you figured 1250 soybeans, which were in that ballpark, right? That means it takes 10 bushel of beans per acre to pay for the cost that we have into this. And so anything over 10 bushel is profit. Anything over 20 is basically, yep, it was worth it. We should do that. Well, this is the yield map. There's the scale. Anything red is less than 20. Anything yellow is 30 plus. I said in that video that the ceiling at the time, because it was July 9th, was probably... 30 to 35 bushel double crop beans and that there was maybe a 10% chance they would go 40. We hit. These could not have gone any better. I, I mean, we we made 40 bushel, maybe 41. Now we'll see what the scale tickets say. We'll see what the cart says. We'll see what Phil's uh, um, scale says on the, or, you know, the, the, the weight tickets from the elevator because these are all getting hauled to town. But uh, we harvested 83.5 acres of double crop beans and um, they made 40. So that means that there's 30 bushel of the acre here on 83 acres of pure profit at 1250, if you wanna use that number. Like that decision to plant double crop beans on this field made us somewhere in the ballpark of $30,000. That's a win. All right, we gotta unhook the head. We're gonna drop this. I'm gonna take the combine home tonight. Uh, the elevator's closed, so we're going to have a full truck. I'm going to see if Phil will um, just fill the truck and leave it set here and take the grain cart home, and then we can come in the morning with a pickup, drag the head home. He can take the truck in, and then we can shell more corn tomorrow. These beans are sort of potty. We might have to uh, climb in the cart and knock them out, get them to flow through a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to let him unload, and then we'll jump in there. This is a different view than I usually get. Standing on the ladder watching it unload. Need another light in the back. Don't ever go in the grain cart when it's unloading. Don't ever, 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 ever go in anything when it is unloading. Grain cart, wagon, grain bin, anything. Probably shouldn't even stand on the ladder, but I'm not that smart. Definitely potty. Yikes. Glad you're not going in our bin. Well, most everything's going to flow out, but we got to go knock those off and down through that grate so that they get into the iron. So we'll wait till he shuts it off and then we'll go in there and just stomp them around. Okay. We're rolling out, heading home. 
8 o'clock at night, oh, this is a big deal to get these double crops out and for them to be as good as they were. Man, that is awesome. Awesome, awesome to have done today. All right. It's not even 8.30. It's an early night during harvest. We're not going to hook up the corn and do any corn tonight. Not, not worth it. But um, we will be back in the corn tomorrow. Hopefully we can have a big day. I've got nine acres down the road and 70 up the road that I would like to get done. We'll see how it goes. Saturday tomorrow. Brock says, I could come, but I don't want to. So he's not coming tomorrow. Brock. So we'll probably have to have Dad in the uh, combine um, that filled up north. It's uh, half mile rows. We're going to need a grain cart up there. Should be really good corn. Uh, we've got some issues that it sounds like are in corn around here that we need to talk about, but we're not going to do it today because today's video is long enough. So, yeah. There, now you can see me to wrap this one up. So, thanks for watching today. If you have any questions and comments, leave them down below and uh, hit that like and subscribe button for me if you would, please. Double crop beans done. Check mark. Awesome. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.